Welcome back to the Football Out West Show. It's an absolute pleasure to welcome back to the Football Out West Show um, a, uh, the, our guest for tonight. He's the coach of the Melbourne Knights, Ben Khan. And Ben, welcome to the show. And um, how are you? Yeah, good, thanks. Sorry, having all sorts of technology yeah. troubles tonight. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, we're talking about technological issue, technology issues at the moment with the streams that seem to be besotting NPL Victoria. But uh, um, sp- on Friday night, um, and Mark was there at that game, it was uh, Avondale Heights, uh, F- F- Avondale FC Avondale. One all draw. How did you see that game, first of all? Uh, look, it was it was certainly eventful. Uh, lots of feeling, lots of emotion. Um, but look, there's there's no doubts that Avondale are a top side. Uh, I think they're probably up there with the most difficult in the competition to play against. It's so hard to you know to sustain any pressure against them, and it's so hard to get out of your own half against them. Um, you know, if you'd uh, if you'd offered me a point before the game, I probably would have taken it. But uh, having said that, being one 0 up and uh, you know, defending well and, and really not giving him too much. We were obviously disappointed to, um, you know, to have to have uh, only come away with a point. And I think, um, let's say, some of, some of the decisions that led us mm-hmm. to that point were probably questionable. And we're we're obviously obviously a little upset at uh, <laughs> how some of those played out. I'll say it for you, Ben. It was never a penalty. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can't say it, but I'll say it for you. Yeah, and and you know the it, it may may you know it, maybe it was maybe it wasn't, but you know Mitch had one exactly the same up the other end earlier, uh, and then there was the the handball in the box as well, and then there was the the last man on Bramwell. Uh, and hundred percent red card. Yeah, and probably you know may, maybe ones that get missed by the neutral, but when you're sat in one bench, you pick up a lot of the throw-ins, and you know the first tackle of the game, he gave a yellow card to Joey Franjic, yep. and. Just Here's the footage. Like that set a strange tone. Um, I but mean, I thought there was a strange booking as well. Yeah, and look, that's that's football, and you know, we 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 make a big point of knowing that there are things that are out of our control in games, and what we'll reflect on is, you know, how we, you know, what we have to do from here on in, which is is make sure that we start to put a run together to secure finals, and you know, if we get Dell, if we end up getting into the finals and playing Avondale, we need to make sure that we're. Um, you know, we're prepared to, to find ways to try and control a bit more of the game against them. Well, Ben, we're looking forward to seeing the next time that you guys do battle with Avondale, and we fancy it might be a finals lineup that will be very exciting to see. But a lot of the coaches I've been speaking to over the weekend have just said that this mid-season transfer window has just completely turned up the intensity. The training sessions have been uh, supercharged. Everyone wants to hold on to their spot in the team. I know you guys have had a, a thick uh, run of fixtures at the moment, but how have you seen that last couple of weeks? Yeah, I think any time you bring in good players into a squad, it, it definitely brings a new dynamic and gives gives everybody some energy and gives it a lift. Um, look, we probably haven't been as active as, as some of the other clubs. It's been hard for us with the PPS because we, you know, we made a lot of changes earlier in the year. So you sort of need that second and third year for um, for players to lose their fifteen points and become ten point players before you can, you know, before you can make big big changes mid season. Um, so yeah, a bit hamstrung by the PPS, but really happy with the two boys we brought in. Um, Anton uh, is obviously you know top scorer in MPL two. He he brings us a different dynamic. Uh, he was fantastic against Northcote in his first start midweek. Uh, and and Benny Collins is you know very, very experienced for such a young man, uh, physically very strong, technically accomplished, and and he's actually he's a really good human as well. Uh, he's taken really well to the dressing room. The boys really like him. I think he's going to be a big player for us on the run home. Ben, I thought uh, you coached really well on on Friday night. Um, obviously, you had a, a hope that you were going to score early, so you could uh, change your, your formation a little bit and, and stifle the way Avondale were going to come at you. Um, I thought it worked really well, and and to manage the squad as well during the week, I thought um, yeah, just both games and the whole week you handled really really well. Um, can you just explain how difficult it has been? Um, I've been at the club in that situation before where there's just game after game after game after game and you know the, the squad you've got isn't um, the, the strongest depth wise compared to some of the other teams uh, just explain how difficult it is to, to continually have to play so many games yeah i think unless you're unless you're really in the thick of it in your you know your day-to-day with the players it's really difficult for people to understand how tough that is you know last week we were together five nights for the week right and that's uh 
that's fine when you're a professional footballer. Uh, but when you're, you know, when you're working for those five days and the range of work that they do varies so much and they all carry pressure in their own jobs and have their own families. And, you know, we, we had them in five days last week because we had the two games, two sessions and obviously the Australia Cup draw. It's um, it's quite intense. It's in, it's um, very demanding on their bodies and their energy. You could see in the Port game after we after we played them three days after the the Arrival Cup game, we just we just couldn't get going. Um, and that was, you know, those 11s were, were were almost the same bar a couple of changes. And and you could see that the effect it had. And and you know, we played Northcote in the week, and we were able to make a lot of changes with the two signings we brought in and some players back from injury and. You know that really helped. So, but you know, to to then to then back up against Avondale a few days after, who, you know, if you're not physically at your best and you're not running and you're not tracking and you're not doing all the small things that make a difference, they can they can just take the game away from you in seconds. And you know, I guess I guess the thing that I was happiest with was that the boys just dug in. And I won't say who, but there were boys in there that were were battling some niggles and some injuries that, um, you know, may may have you know other players may have pulled out with and they pushed through and, and they showed such strength and character to, to hang on and get that result. Um, is that seven, why you seven, seven games, seven games is that why a month is? at this level is, is really tough. You know, most, most, most it's five max usually at this level, seven takes its toll. So no, uh, but we, we want to be competing yeah. in everything. We, you know, the playing group and the staff, we had a discussion, you know, we don't want to, we don't want to play the 21s and get knocked out of cup competition. We want to win, and and I think it's important for a big club and an ambitious club to be, to be seen to be going as far as they can in every competition. And obviously, it's put a strain on our league form. We we know that, but we're still, you know, we're still in the race for finals, and we believe if we can get there, we can win it. We're still in the race for the Australia Cup, and we're we're still going in the Doherty. So uh, we need to just manage that squad well and see how far we can go. Is, yeah, is that what Mark? You're going to say something in the game, Ben, because you. You were so uh, heavy legged, probably. Um, I noticed the the switch to the back five as soon as you you went one nil up, and then um, probably felt like the momentum had shifted a little bit and went back to your usual formation in the second half. But was that the reason behind it? Um, a few reasons. Um, you know, the uh, uh, Zinni and Xander Guy are fantastic out wide. The fullbacks get forward as well, and it's uh, it's a lot to ask of of any fullback to defend against Avondale. So. You know, we, we I thought the game was quite even early on, and but you could see in that sort of last fifteen of the half that we started to tire, and you know they got a lot of joy um, on on both sides. Not not anybody's fault, just the way the game panned out. Yeah. So we tried to give a little bit more protection to see the half out. Uh, also, we by by doing that, it allowed us to bring John Albano inside a little bit more, which gave us. Um, uh, a different type of outlet to try and counter and hurt them through the middle. Uh, in in the way it panned out, we, we didn't necessarily it didn't eventuate that way, but the thought was there. Um, and we, you know, the halftime window gave us a, a chance to recharge and and go again and try and press high and um, play our usual way. And uh, it, you know, <laughs> you know, but you know, even in before their goal and, and probably even after the goal, really, the, the game just defaulted into us having to sit deep. We just didn't have the legs and the freshness to, to really go after them. I think if we'd gone and tried to press as high as we usually do or if we tried to commit as, uh, you know, as many bodies forward, I think they would have done us. I think they would have opened us up. So we had to protect it and try and hit them on the counter. Ben, you mentioned about player management or, or, or squad management, and especially now with so many different games, so much commitment required from the players. And look, we're now into the business end of the season. Does your off the field, or should I say, a training tracks and off the off away from the match day? Does your approach now towards training and and match day preparation does it start to change a little? Does the intensity back off a little bit? Do you try and mix things up? Do you what? What do you do to keep the squad fresh and prepped and primed, ready for the contests ahead? Yeah, we you know we just make sure that at the right times and, and where we have opportunity to do so, we 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 allow a lot of rest and recovery. But you know we we um, there's a lot of detail and planning that goes into the loading of the sessions, and that's you know that's from day one all the way through until the last game of the season. And basically, we just manage you know manage each week with with what it demands. You know, this week we we don't play a midweek game, so we we'll, we you know we've given them the weekend off. We'll come back in tomorrow. We'll make sure that tomorrow's focus is on recovery and 
uh, you know, regeneration. And then we, mm-hmm. we go hard for the rest of the week and we push them and we try and grow and learn and improve and see if we can make the team better. And hopefully that shows when we, uh, we play on the weekend. And, and Ben, just you mentioned earlier on the signing of Ben Collins. Uh, from what we were hearing, he might have been, when you were looking at him, he might have been about four weeks away. There was some word that he might have been a little bit away from his, his best or full fitness. Um, is that the way that you see it as well? And has he got a lot of improvement in him towards the end of the season for, for that reason? Yeah, look, it's a conversation that we've had um, with Ben is that, you know, had we have signed him pre-season, we, you know, we would have periodised him differently and, and managed him um, and tried to progress him like we do with everyone. But... If we if we were to do that now, you know, he wouldn't be playing until you know mm. two three games to go. So it wouldn't have been a worthwhile signing. So when we signed him, we had the chat. Are you ready to to get chucked in at the deep end and and see where you land? <laughs> he was superb on Friday night. I thought Ben he was, he was really, really good. good. He's very good. He was good when he came on against Northcote too. Uh, he's been really good at training. The boys really like him. He's you know he's a good character, good good footballer. Really happy with him. The Lions have seen the Australia Cup draw. I'm sure, you had a smile on your face when that draw came out. <laughs> um, it was uh, an old foe for you, but probably a, a blessing in disguise for the Knights because at least you'll know them inside and out. Yeah, look, I've um, had a lot of games in the last five years against Lions. I think we, you know, obviously played them twice twice a year in the league, and I think we played them in every final series for five years. We, uh, we 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 beat them in the two semis and uh, we we lost them in the three grand finals. Uh, so yeah, an opponent I know very well, a club that's look rivalries aside, uh, Lions are a very very strong club. Uh, good people running the club the whole way through. Uh, good processes, uh, you know, good resources. Um, traditionally, do do you know they get themselves up for big games, whatever competition it's in, and you know I've got no doubts of. Um, you know what a uh, what a big fixture it is, and and it's going to be a big night for everybody involved. Yeah, if we go through the fixtures there involving the Victorian clubs, Oakley Cannons coming up against Melbourne City FC, the Melbourne Derby. Well, that's going to be a big one, a mm. big game indeed. We've, we've mentioned the Melbourne Knights at home to Lions FC, expecting a huge crowd for that. Obviously, we don't know um, exact dates and times and all of that kind of stuff, but that's still to be determined. Steve, Golden Valley Suns and Arpia Leichhardt, what a festival of football that is going to be in Shepparton. Yeah, long trip for Arpia Leichhardt. I'm not sure what their logistics will be to get to Shepparton, but they're doing very well, uh, I understand, in the NPL New South Wales. So there'll be a tough assignment for the Suns, but uh, on home turf, they've been hard to beat, knocking off you know, the likes of uh, some of the NPL top-tier sides in Victoria, of course. So... Very exciting to see how the Suns go, not only in that game, but also in their home Doherty Cup semi-final against Heidelberg United as well. And looking at the uh, the next fixture there, Northcote City hosting uh, A-League and one of the powers of the Australia Cup, one of the most successful teams yeah. in the competition, Adelaide United. I'm not sure if they're going to be able to play that at John Kane or not. I hope they can, but I think last time they had a home game in this competition, it was played elsewhere and then uh Holderberg United they uh drew a trip away one of the very few teams to do so but given Olympic Village is out of action that's probably not a bad thing for the boys to get a trip up to uh sunny Brisbane to warm up this time of year yeah they'll go up to Morton Bay United so that's definitely something to uh, look forward to but something else to look forward to Ben is this weekend uh the big Croatian derby for you guys coming up against North Geelong down at Alco Park on Sunday, 3 p.m., something a bit different for North Geelong. But uh, as part of this, there's going to be a um, a big, big um, – well, North Geelong have already announced it, but um, a big heartbeat of football festival. Um, Andy Pascalidis, famous Andy Pascalidis from the NSL days and a real media personality from Sydney, he is bringing down his heartbeat of football roadshow. And there'll be more about that in tomorrow night's um, Game of Two Halves podcast where we will probably have – Andy Pascalides on the show to talk about that. So do stay tuned for that. But as far as on-field matters, Ben, that's going to be a tough game. North Geelong are desperate. And the last time they came, they were involved in a Croatian derby against the sister club down at Alco Park, they recorded a win, 1-0 against St Albans, their only home win um, in at Alco Park. So it's a tough game. Um, and one of those sort of games that, you know, if, you, if you're not on your toes, it could prove to be a very tricky and costly one for, for the Knights. Yeah, look, they're, they're a good side. And, you know, I, I think that, you know, they're, they're obviously desperate to, you know, to stay up. And, and as you get into the back end of the season, every fixture means something. Um, 
there's 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 not a chance that we take anybody lightly and we you know as i said before it's really just about us focusing on on making sure that we're ready this week uh, but no doubts that it's going to be a big game we know how much it means to them and uh, we'll you know we'll, we'll go there with with full respect for them and we'll be very very hungry to to turn our league form around and and try and make sure we take some steps to securing finals football and Ben, following that fixture, you've got the Oakley Cannons in the Doherty Cup semi-final the following Wednesday night. Uh, unfortunately, as you said, this week is a, a midweek f- uh, free fixture uh, week for you. But um, yeah, the Oakley Cannons, you've had two draws with them this season. There'll be no draw on the night, obviously. Um, did you watch them today? And how do you think they're travelling? Haven't watched them today. Uh, I took the day off football today. Uh, you guys, you guys are the only ones that have had my time today. <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, privileged. But, 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 oh, but absolutely course, privileged. Thank of you. Of course, I will go back and watch them. And look, Oakley, are, Oakley are fantastic. Um, no, to, to be honest with you, the, the three sides above us, you can see in the, the the points gap and how they've opened up from the rest of the league, how strong they are. Uh, Oakley, Oakley are every every bit uh, in that mix, especially with their result today. Um, our, our two games against them have, have both um, both followed similar patterns. They were, were were much better than us in the opening half an hour, and, and we were the team that came home stronger and looked like we were going to win it. So, I think for us, it's you know it's important to make sure that we stay in the game, and that, you know we're in touching distance of them as that last half an hour comes around. And we, you know, if we are, we have full belief that we can go on and win it. And uh, finally, Ben, how, you, how have you adjusted to Melbourne? Um, nice and uh, cold and miserable and a bit different <laughs> to Queensland, isn't it? It's, uh, yeah, it's been a challenge, actually. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a far away from Queensland. <laughs> And I tell you what, summer streets about ten degrees colder than everywhere else in Melbourne yep. as well. You think, you, <laughs> true, true. you think it's a cold day when you leave when you leave home, and then you get to Summer Street and you go, "Shit, I need some more layers here." <laughs> it's very true. <laughs> Well, well, Ben. Um, tell you what, it's it's a challenge for us Victorians. Uh, let me tell you this: it's and let alone for uh, people who have just come from Queensland. But uh, on that note, mate, thank you very much for uh, for for really brightening up our Sunday evening. And um, we're we're very privileged and, and honoured that you uh, allowed us to be a. Uh, um, uh, to, to come into uh, to come into our episode, our show on a day off today. No but worries. Thank you very much for that. Wishing you all the best for the season that lies ahead. No worries. Thanks, guys. Speak to you soon. Thanks. Thanks.